I do want to give you a little tutorial on how to use the TID3 or the TID4 to, to perform matrix operations um, because it's going to save us a lot of time for the second half of the course. So right now I'm just going to turn on, well, my TID3 is already on, and notice that to get to the matrix menu I hit second inverse, and I have three menus here, the edit menu, the math menu, which is essentially all the functions involved with matrix operations that are programmed in the calculator, and the names. So we're going to start with edit. Notice that I've already been using this to put in certain matrices. And here, look next to the first matrix, I have the name of the matrix A and then its dimension. I want to edit that and make it my new A, a 3x3 three three that's written over here. So here's my 3x3. Three three. I changed the dimensions up here. And now it automatically changes um, the dimensions of the matrix A. So I have room to put in all my all my entries. So here's my first entry, second, third, now on row 2, 0, 1 half, and 3 halves, 2, 1, and 1 half. Now most of you could figure this out on your own, but it's nice to have somebody show you the tricks. All right, so now I have redefined my matrix A to be a 3x3 three three as I've written over here. Now it's the same in the calculator. The secret here is to sit, hit second mode, which is quit, so that you can actually have a clean screen to work with. And let's say I want to, I don't know, we'll, we'll talk about the different things we want to do, but let's say the first thing I want to do is multiply A and B. I already have it a B in there, but you'd have to put one in there. So I go back to my matrix menu. And now when I want to refer to a matrix, I have to go under names, not edit, but names. And so I'm going to say A. And I'm going to go ahead and hit times. Of course, we don't need times. It knows that this is matrix multiplication because I'm in the matrix menu. I go back to B. I've already put a B in there that's a 3 by 3. So I'm going to be able to multiply these two matrices. When I do, I get something that looks like that. Now, let's say I want to go ahead and use this matrix in the future, but I don't want to have to type it in. I can store it. Oops. I want to do, oops, let's do this again. I want to store my answer into the matrix, again, the matrix menu, names, and let's say I want to store it into C. Notice that C is already defined to be a 3x3, three three, so it'll store it in there. So if I ever want to recall that matrix, I go back to C, list it, there it is. Let's say I hate the idea that there are fr um, decimals in this matrix and I want them to be written as fractions. Well, you just go under math. It's the same if you had a regular fraction in memory. I take the last thing of mem in memory, turn it into a fraction, turns this entire matrix into um, fraction representation. Let's see, what else can we show you? What if I wanted to find the inverse of A? Well, I just go and under names and put the matrix A in there. Then I hit inverse. Bingo. Oh, wow, look. That's so ugly, isn't it? It goes off the screen. I can scroll to see all the terms, all the um, entries of the matrix. Okay, good. So now let's say I want to store this. Well, let, let's say I want it to be a fraction, right? All those. I, I don't want to try to figure out what fractions those are. So I could go to math frac, enter, and suddenly, I don't think it's any nicer, but suddenly they're all fractions. Now let's say I wanted to take this guy, the last uh, matrix in memory, and I want to go ahead and store it to D. Well, D is already a 3x3 three three matrix. It won't matter. It'll redefine it if it's not. And suddenly that's now D. Let's say I want to... Oh, here's a good one. Let's say I want to find uh, row reduced echelon form. Now I'm going to take you to the functions part. So let's say, oh, let's do it this way. Uh, so I could take the determinant if I want to. Let's get, take the determinant of A. Um, again, I'm just going to feed it A from the names menu. Oh, the determinant is never negative 7.625. Nice to know. Now, what about the determinant of D? 
or we just made up G. It's that big ugly matrix. Bingo. There's the determinant. At least it's non-zero, right? Now, what if I want to do row reduced echelon form? That's what we're going to mostly use the calculator for. So I already have the the my A programmed in, and I'm going to do go down here. There are lots of different functions you can learn. Um, primarily, we're going to use determinant, and we're going to use row reduced echelon form because that gets me right to the answer if I'm solving a system of equations, right? So now I have to put in the actual matrix I want to find row reduced echelon form of. And there you go. Actually, there was a reason I knew that that was going to be the identity matrix um, because of the matrix I chose. So um, those that's kind of the greatest hits. Uh, what if you wanted to raise something to a power, right? A matrix to a power. Well, you could do that. Let's say I have a matrix. Let's do an easy one. C. No. Let's do F. Let's see what F looks like. Oh, that's neat. That's a elementary matrix. Good. Must have been doing elementary matrices. And so let's say I want to take F and raise it to the fifth power. Let's see how ugly that thing is. I'm not even sure. Oh, sure. That's easy. Oh, you're going to learn why that's a, there's a shortcut for that. We should have just looked at that and seen that that was going to be the case. Later in the class, you'll learn why that happened. Okay. I hope that's been a nice introduction to the TI-8384 and matrix operations. Let me know if you have any questions and keep working hard.